The aim of this lesson is to provide some tips for the creative writing section in paper one of the HSC English exam. You are required to compose a piece of creative writing that explores the concept of discovery using stimulus that is provided in the paper. The simple way to get better at creative writing is to practice writing. Write regularly. Often the hardest thing to do is just to get started. I use lots of different stimuli in the classroom to prompt creative writing. My favourite stimulus is getting students to listen to conversations with Richard Feidler, which you can listen to or podcast from ABC Radio. These conversations are a great source of ideas, characters and events. You'll hear about a photographer who captured images of Mongolian eagle hunters, a scientist researching Huntington's disease, and the story of a female footballer who discovered that her biological family were indigenous, fracturing her sense of self. Once you've chosen your stimulus, I'd recommend that you decide what you want the key idea of your writing to be. The key idea is what your narrative will teach the reader about the human experience. Some examples of key ideas might be the importance of family, establishing whether human life is ruled by free agency or destiny, exploring an individual's connection with God, or the reality of climate change, etc. Of course, whatever your key idea is, you need to relate it to the concept of discovery. You'll need to consider what is the catalyst for the discovery, what kinds of discovery are there, what are the ramifications of the discovery. I think the worst thing you can do is just to have a character discovering a chest of treasure. That's sure to get the HSC markers. <sighs> Personally, I think self-discovery for your character is essential. There needs to be transformation for your central character from the start of the story to the resolution. This self-discovery sits inside the spiritual, physical, intellectual, creative, and or emotional discoveries that occur in your composition. I'd recommend that you have a limited number of characters. Three or less is ideal. You have such a limited time to develop characters, so say a lot about a little. The most important rule of writing is to show, don't tell. Anton Chekhov made this point when he said, Don't tell me the moon is shining. Show me the glint of white on broken glass. Another old chestnut that teachers throw around is, write what you know. I think this is really valuable advice to explore, events and emotions that you've experienced. One of the most powerful discovery stories that I've encountered was the story of a girl travelling back to Serbia to meet her extended family after the death of her father. The story explored the different stages of the grief as she discovered a new culture, people, family and world. I'll read a brief extract. Volumte, my father whispered, stretching out his hand to touch my cheek. It was the last thing he ever said to me. It was weird how he started talking in Serbian at the end. He had always insisted that we speak English at home, and would become furious with my mother if he ever heard her speaking to me in Serbian. It was hard to connect the shriveled, gaunt man lying in the hospital bed to my father. It didn't look like him, sound like him, or even smell like him. My father had always had his own scent. The sharp tang of tobacco mixed with the earthiness of the fruit and vegetables he sold. It was a comfortable, warm smell, but now, lying lifelessly beneath bedsheets, he just smelt like the hospital. A cold, sterile smell that made my nose feel like bleeding. My apologies to any Serbian speakers listening for my Serbian. I love this story. It was very personal to the girl who wrote it. However, I think writing can also be for you to explore another person's point of view, and this develops empathy, which is perhaps life's most important skill. If you want to write about something you've never experienced, talk to someone who has experienced it, and then try and write from their perspective. I believe that good writing starts at the sentence level. How to Write a Sentence and How to Read One by Stanley Fish is a wonderful book, which will develop your ability to write coherent, interesting sentences. On Writing, A Memoir of the Craft by Stephen King is also excellent. As is Everything I Know About Writing by John Marsden. Marsden provides a wonderful example of poor writing in a Mills and Boone novel. He watched her eyes fly open, and she saw his fly open too. Ambiguity's intention in your creative writing are good things, but not at the sentence level. For good writing, verbs are vital. Your use of verbs shapes your writing, whether you're composing a narrative or an essay. 
Therefore, you should always be on the hunt for interesting verbs that you can add to your own writing. During your HSC year, you should write as much as possible. I dedicate some of your free periods to writing and to editing your writing. As well as self-editing, you could get other people to give you feedback on your creative writing, such as your teacher and peers. You can even create a generic sheet to give them, so it's easy for them to provide you with usable feedback. Some questions that may be worth asking are, does the story make sense? Can you identify the central idea of the story? Is there a clear catalyst and ramification for the discovery? Is the resolution satisfying? Is the story plausible? Is there a balance between action, reflection and dialogue? Does the narrative contain interesting language and or devices to engage the reader? Do the paragraphs each represent a new idea or event? Does the writer use interesting verbs? Does the writing show not tell? Has the correct conventions in punctuation and layout been used for direct speech? Does the writer need to check spelling in places? Does the writer use a variety of sentence types and beginnings? Has the writer maintained verb tenses? Is the vocabulary appropriate and varied? Do you have any suggestions for the writer in terms of the story? You can also add questions that you feel are important, and I'd recommend that you leave space after each of these questions for the editor to make suggestions about where you can improve. Although you may start by writing a short story, practice adapting this story into different forms. Journal, diary, postmodern or experimental text, fable, interview or speech. You may be asked to write in these forms in the HSC, so it's an invaluable exercise to write the same story in different formats and consider how the change in form transforms the meaning. There are so many ways that you can transform your story. You could change the protagonist's gender. Traditionally in literature and films, female characters have been represented in a very limited way. Switching the gender of your characters in a rewrite is one way to avoid gender stereotypes in your writing. You can also switch your character's sexuality and or ethnic background. You could change the setting or the genre. You could rewrite the story in first person, second person or third person narrative. Each time you make a change, analyse how this affects meaning, the key idea of the narrative and the discovery that occurs. I believe that there is an important role for creative writing in every module that you study. I'd encourage you to compose a text at the end of every unit that mimics the form, structure and meaning of your prescribed text or texts. I believe that this activity will really help you to understand the form, structure and language of the text. And if you understand these things, you will understand meaning and how meaning is represented. So, go out and write poetry like Robert Frost, T.S. Eliot or Margaret Atwood. Prose like Jane Austen, George Orwell or Aldous Huxley. For prose, I'd encourage you to write an extra chapter for the novel. Aim to write about 1,000 words, which is what you'll aim to write in your HSE exam. Plays like Shakespeare, Margaret Edson or Arthur Miller. Create non-fiction work such as documentaries, memoirs or speeches, depending on what your prescribed text is. Finally, shoot an extra scene from a film that you've studied. Combine visual techniques with sound, dialogue, costume, music, lighting, like Fritz Lang, Ang Lee, or Alyssa Down. Obviously, this is a small sample of composers. I'd recommend you create something that reflects the work that you are studying. Composing your own text that builds on or borrows from a prescribed text is the best way for you to develop your understanding of how form and structure of a text type shapes meaning. And the HSC markers feedback consistently addresses that students need to demonstrate their understanding of structure and form in their HSC essays. My recommendation here transcends just plain creative writing and requires that you also create visual texts. Getting back to the writing side, I'd encourage you to experiment with the structure of your composition. Rewrite the same narrative using different structures, linear, chronological, flashback and parallel. Again, analyse how the change in structure transforms the meaning of the writing. As you're self-editing, there are a few things that you can do to improve your writing and hopefully add marks when you get into an exam situation. Add a motif, use contrast, provide a backstory, create a sense of place and mood, and or make a philosophical statement. When you do get to the exam, you can either use a pre-prepared narrative, 
or you can fly by the seat of your pants and just respond to the stimuli in the exam. I don't think there is a right way or a wrong way. Both have their benefits. However, if you are using a pre-prepared story, you need to make sure that you practice adapting it to different stimuli and practice writing it in different forms. Whatever you choose, you need to aim to write around 1,000 words. The HSC markers feedback from the previous year, which you can find on the BOSTES website, provides some tips on what to do and what not to do. In 2015, the markers wrote that strong creative writing responses imaginatively used the stimulus in both a literal and a metaphorical manner, demonstrated a sense of cohesiveness and skillful control of language through a well-crafted response, created a character with an authentic voice, and explored the sudden impact of the discovery in a variety of ways. The markers also suggested that you need to avoid cliched and predictable plots, write in a controlled and sustained manner, move beyond the literal interpretation of the stimulus, and deal with the concept throughout the response rather than just referring to the end. And that's it. You've made it. To recap the main points of the lesson, practice writing as much as you can. Use conversations with Richard Feidler as stimulus for your writing. There are some great stories. Decide what the key idea of your writing will be. Make sure discovery is embedded into your narrative, particularly self-discovery. Make sure you show, don't tell. Use evocative verbs. Adapt your composition into different forms. Analyse how changes to characters' gender, sexuality, and or ethnicity affects meaning. Rewrite your story in first, second, or third person narrative. Finally, read the HSC markers feedback from the previous year and learn from past students' strengths and mistakes. So as the orchestra music begins to play, the final thing for me to do is to wish Year 12 students all the best with their studies and exams. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you.